Hey guys, uh, this is Mr. Beckstrom, and today I wanted to go over some examples of the chain rule. Uh, the chain rule is in section 3.7, and we'll be having a quiz on it this weekend. So I wanted to give uh, three pretty common examples of when you'll see the chain rule, how to apply it, and sometimes even when you're going to have to apply it more than one time in uh, the same a uh, question here. So let's take a look. I, I did three examples. I just kind of made these up and let's go through the process of applying it. Uh, so the first one here I have 3e to the negative 3x squared plus 2x. So we know we can use the sum rule to break those up into two separate functions. Um, and then we're, we have the, the function e to the something other than just x. So whenever we have e to something then to other than just x, uh, immediately that should be the chain rule. So the outer function is kind of e to whatever this is, we call it u, that's our outer function, and then the inner function is whatever's in here, would be the negative 3x squared. So remember, it's the derivative of the outer function times the derivative of the inner function. And the 3 just kind of hangs around for the ride. So for number 1, we're finding the derivative of this function here. So I should probably just, so finding the derivative with respect to x there. Um, so this is going to be 3. So the derivative of the outer function, remember the derivative of e to the u is just e to the u. Um, that's the cool thing about the e function is it's just the derivative of itself is just itself. But we also have to multiply it by the derivative of the inside function, which is negative 3x squared. So we're also going to have to multiply it by uh, the derivative of negative 3x squared, which is negative 6x, applying the power rule. So this is negative 6x. Now remember, uh, u is just that negative 3x squared. It's probably just as easy here just to write that as negative 3x squared x squared. Usually I do a u substitution when we have slightly uh, more complicated problems where I can go back. Remember u substitution is just kind of a placeholder uh, so I, I don't get lost later. So now just to clean this up here uh, it's going to be what negative 18 bring the constant out front or the yeah the coefficient negative 18 and then the x and then e to the negative 3x squared, something like this. All right. Oh, and then we have the derivative of the second part. So the derivative of 2x is just going to be 2. So that would be plus 2. And that's your derivative. All right. Not too hard. Not too hard. So the second one. Second one. This is also uh, something that we look at quite often. Uh, the derivative of a trig function. So if we just had the derivative of the of the tangent of x, that would just be the secant squared of x. But if we have the derivative of the tangent of anything other than x, we have to apply the chain rule. So it's the derivative of the outside function, which is basically the tangent of u, times the derivative of the inside function, which is the derivative of what's ever inside that angle of the tangent function there. So uh, we know that the derivative of tangent is secant squared. So when we take the derivative with respect to x of this, uh, so first we're going to do the derivative of the outside, which is just the secant squared of whatever that angle is. So we don't change the actual angle around, just like we didn't change what was in the exponent for the first one. So negative 5x to the fourth. All right, and then we're going to multiply that by the derivative of the inside function. That's the angle here. So the derivative, we're going to use the power rule. 4 times negative 5 is negative 20. Negative 20, subtract 1 from the x. So that would be x cubed. So it should look like this. So when we pull everything out front there, we should get negative 20 uh, x cubed secant 
squared of negative 5x to the fourth. And because we are good trig students, we know that uh, secant is an even function. And we can clean this up slightly. And since it's an even function, we know that the angle of the negative or the, uh, the secant of the negative angle is the same as the secant of the positive angle. So we can leave that as a positive angle there. All right. Um, so that was not too bad. Now let's go ahead and do this next one, this last one. This last one I made a little bit more complicated just to uh, show you uh, what we can do with these things. All right. So number three. All right. So once again, um, the outside function here is this function. So this would be our inside function here. This is our inside function, and our outside function would be like this thing raised to the 10th power. So think of it as the outside function as being like u raised to the 10th power. And then the inside function would be 3x to the negative 2 plus e to the 4x squared. Okay, so if we look at it like that, if we define that as our inside function, that is our outside function, which encompasses the entire function there. So we can write this. So our derivative of our outside function would just be 9, just pull the 10 out front using the power rule, and then we don't change our inside function at all, um, plus e to the or x squared, and we subtract, wait, 9. That, that was a mistake. I was thinking too quickly ahead. We bring that exponent out front 10. So then we subtract 1 from the 10. We put the 9 over here. Yes. So that is the derivative of our outside function, just applying the power rule, right? Bring the 10 out front, subtract 1 from the exponent. So that's the derivative of our outside function. And then we're going to multiply that by the derivative of our inside function. So okay, we can use the sum rule to do that. The derivative of 3x to the negative 2, we can use the power rule for that. So bring the negative 2 out front. Negative 2 times 3 is negative 6x. Negative 2 minus 1 is negative 3. Don't get fooled there and put negative 1. It's negative 2 minus 1, which is negative 3, plus, uh-oh, notice that we need to find the derivative of this as well, but in order to do that, we're going to need to apply the chain rule again. So instead of trying to do that right now, I'm just going to say, well, I'll do this later. So I'm just going to write down, I'm going to have to do this at some point, so I'm just going to write plus the derivative because I haven't actually figured it out yet, so I'm just going to leave it as something that still needs to be done. 4x squared, All right? And that's the derivative of the inside with this still needing to be done. So if I'm ever going through a problem and I don't quite know how to take the derivative of something yet, I can just still leave it in the, I still need to take the derivative of it form and go do it off to the sides. So that's what I'm going to do. So now I'm going to go off to the side and I'm going to say, all right, what is the derivative with respect to x? What's the derivative with respect to x of e to the 4x squared? 4x squared. Well, I know I can apply the chain rule. So that's the derivative of the outside, which is just the same thing because of the way that e works, times the derivative of the inside, which is just the derivative of 4x squared, which is 8x. So this thing is just equal to 8x times, uh, not times, that times e to the 4x squared. And now I can take this and substitute it in for that, which is what I'm going to do. So this thing is now equal to 10 times, let's clean this up a little bit. We don't like to leave negative exponents in our final answer. So we can say 3 over x squared plus 
e to the 4x squared, all right, raised to the ninth power times, and once again, uh, we don't like to leave negative exponents. I can say negative 6 over x cubed, negative 6 over x cubed, plus 8x e to the 4x squared. 4x squared. And that's it. Now, if, I mean, look at here. I have four terms. One, two, three, four. If I were to foil this together, I'd probably still have four terms, so I'm not going to make this look any prettier. Um, so I might as well just leave it like this. I mean, if I really wanted to, I could probably distribute this 10 in to one of these two, uh, you know, binomials here. But why do that? So this looks like a good answer to me. All right. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know. But uh, these are the the three main kinds of uh, chain rule questions that you're going to see. Um, e to the something other than x, a trig function to something other than x, and something raised to a power that's other than just an x. All right. Once again, questions, let me know, and I hope you have a great week and good luck.